So, before we go on to learn anything new, these other riffs that I've mentioned that I'm going to uh, cover next, I just want to have a quick uh, check in on technique and make sure that we're, we're doing things the right way and not using bad habits because I suspect, after what I've seen in my own teaching experience, that this could perhaps slip into it when we're, we're learning these type of uh, riffs and things. The last uh, video I did was about learning the, uh, the simple four note riff that we're going to use across the 12 bar progression, which was... And then I moved that from the, that was the A position into the D position, the E position and around the progression. What I didn't mention, and I did this for a reason so that I can carry it on in uh, this explanation now, is the fingers that I was using. If you were watching, I was using my first and my third fingers only to play that riff. So I'm a first finger, third finger, first finger, third finger. Now, this is going to become a lot more important when we move on to the, the following riffs and also when we move on to doing proper uh, lead guitar techniques. I've spoken uh, on videos before about something called uh, position play, hand position play and using the right fingers to play the notes rather than just using whatever you think is the easiest fingers which is one of the um, aspects that I've seen students doing. With positional play, I've, I've got a video I'll see if I can put a link but I'll just do a quick explanation again. With positional play what I mean is when we've got our hand in a certain position, we want to be using um, the right fingers to play the right notes. So, in the example of these riffs, in this A 12 bar progression, our position is the 5th fret. When we're in the 5th fret position, we're going to start with our, our first finger on the 5th fret. So any notes that are played on the 5th fret we want to be using our first finger, that's that's our starting fret. In these examples, I'm not playing anything lower than there, this is the lowest we're going to get, so this is our lowest finger, if we look at the orientation of the guitar, nothing lower than there, so anything on our fifth fret, we want to be using our fifth finger. Any notes played on our sixth fret, no matter what string, we want to be using our next finger, which is going to be our our second finger. In the riff that I just played we didn't have any six fret notes so that one didn't come into play. We did have some notes on the seventh fret, next one up, so our next finger up is our third finger, so that was the finger I was using to play the notes on my seventh fret. Again in the last example the I didn't have any notes on my eighth fret, we are going to do soon, so I didn't use my my fourth finger, my little pinky. So just to play up from the fifth fret, just going up the string, anything on my fifth fret wants to be my first finger, anything on my sixth fret wants to be my second finger, anything on my seventh fret wants to be my third finger, my ring finger, anything on my eighth fret when it comes in future wants to be my little finger. I'm using this as a, it's not a golden rule, sometimes we're going to break this rule when we get further on, but at this point, when we're, when we're doing these exercises, we're going to call it a golden rule, because otherwise, when we move on, you're going to get twisted up in all kinds of strange ways, and it's just not going to work when you try and play what's coming next, and it's a good um, basic standard. As I say rules are there to be broken. There are times when you might want to stretch more than four frets. So obviously, if I wanted to stretch like that, then the one finger per fret rule isn't going to work. There might be times when I have to get a little bit closer in and use two fingers on the same fret, almost when I'm doing a chord. That won't crop up in lead guitar so much, but uh, there are times when we'll break those rules. But for now. It's really good practice to get into the habit on these basic patterns, and, and they are basic patterns, of one finger per
per fret. That doesn't come easy. Um, as I said, I've noticed students um, using um, alternate fingers to play things. I was doing a session this morning, one of my students had a habit of starting with his second finger all the time. So, going back to the, the riff that we've just done in the previous video, he probably would have approached it playing that same note, the one that I played there. My fifth fret, he would have started that, and he did start that, with his second finger. Okay, so no problem there. It sounds just the same, whichever finger I use. The only problem is now, when I want to play the next note of it, I'm, I'm compromised because I'm going to either have to use my little finger, which he didn't want to do either, so he was using his second and third fingers to try and play the riff. I can do that. I can do it okay because I'm used to playing, I'm used to stretching, I've been playing a while, but it's automatically setting me up with complications that I don't really need. So I've got a stretch there that I don't really have to do. If I'd have wanted to play something on a higher fret, on my eighth fret, which we're going to do in the next video, I would really be struggling because I'd have a super stretch there. I can manage it now, that stretch, but with my years of experience, my hand has stretched a little bit. This is aimed at people who may not have that experience, so you're not going to be able to stretch that far, and you might compromise or risk hurting yourself by trying to stretch that far. So, apart from it being a good technique, it's actually going to avoid you the chance of um, you know overstretching and hurting yourself. A not notable exception is something that I've spoke about I think once before. I, I can't remember which video it was in, so I don't know if I'm able to link it. But you might have some kind of a hand injury or a problem. I, I do have some of those type of things which is compromised. I think it was a video on playing chords that I did where I had to adopt a certain fingering that was not the normal one and then afterwards it made me think why have I done that, I better explain that um, uh, because of some of the work that I've done previously I do have a couple of injuries on my fingers so I've had to adapt, overcome uh, and do it that way so don't worry if you've got some kind of a problem or you know you've got an issue with one of your fingers or something in your hand that you can't do it for that reason but you know you know yourself if you do or don't have that. If your hands are generally okay and good, and if it just is a bit of a, a stretch and a bit of a strange new thing, it's worth persevering to get it um, to, to get it using the right uh, the right fingers and the right technique. Bring it up now because uh, if you've got a bad habit, it's easier to sort of stop it in the bud, nip it in the bud, rather than to let it progress. It's something that um, when I'm working in person with students, I, I can pick up straight away and say, oh, hang on a minute, um, why are you doing that? Let's have a look at your finger in there. That's one of the great things about working in person with students. It doesn't work quite the same on video. Only you will know which fingers you were using, but um, I just wanted to sort of hit the stop button here and make sure that going forward to the next ones in this sequence that we've got the technique correct going forward. So. One finger per fret, starting on the fifth fret, so fifth fret, first finger, sixth fret, second finger, seventh fret, third finger, eighth fret, fourth finger, regardless of which string we're using. I've done some warm up exercises using that exact same pattern for that reason previously. So if you were playing the material from the last video, and if you weren't using your first and your third fingers like I am now, I strongly suggest you revisit that lesson and get it so that you can play it using your first and third fingers in order to be able to get the best learning experience going forward. If you've learnt it another way using different fingers, at this point you're probably not going to enjoy it, but going forward in order to improve your your learning your technique which is what I'm aiming to do please go back try and do it the correct way and then going forward 
you will be able to. Enjoy.